Hi, this is Jill Schiaparelli with Health Tech Talk Live, broadcasting to you worldwide on the iHeartMedia platform. We are here today on the floor of UBM Cannon's Medical Design and Manufacturing Conference in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're talking to many different medical innovators and with me today is Bob Marshall, uh, Director of Business Development for R&Q Solutions, which is a regulatory and quality consulting group. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Jill. We're really pleased you're here. Uh, Bob has an amazing, amazing resume that spans more than 20 years in all aspects of medical device development, manufacturing, quality, and regulatory. He's been an executive at such well-known companies as Respironics, Medrad, and Siemens, and is now consulting with companies to help them bring products to market. Bob, you were speaking, a featured speaker at the conference this week. Um, I'm sure that over your career you've seen a great deal of change, and your topic today was integrating the voice of the clinician in the development process. Right. Why is that important? Well, in, in, in the end, it's a matter of, of, I mean, those are the people that are going to use the product, right? right? And, and it's to ensure that it's going to be safe, that it's going to work effectively. That is, you know, it's just, it's, it's paramount, really, to, to what they do. So we really want to engage them early um, and have some formality into how we gather that information to ensure that it's really going to work when there's a real patient involved. Sure. We hear a lot about the importance of voice of customer. You get the feeling people give lip service to it sometimes and don't follow it seriously. What advice do you tend to give to companies about the right way to engage clinicians? Well, the key is that they need to be directly involved and you need to understand. When I, I spoke at a, a previous conference last year and I was, I was co-presenting with a doctor and he said probably the best thing I've ever heard said about the usability of human factors and that voice of the customer. It's, you know, healthcare is busy. Um, things are moving quickly for sure. docs, for clinicians. And he said, you know, if, if you put something in my hand that, that I can't readily understand within a minute or so and doesn't feel good to me, I will never use it. Right. Right, and, and you're never going to sell the device. So for all of the great ideas and development that may be behind a product, it will never see the light of day, or at least never gain critical adoption. Right. Um, just because it, it doesn't have the ergonomic fit and it doesn't, it's not right. what they want. Right. right? Cl clinicians are humans too, and they, they want to feel good about their product. Right. When do you advise your clients to bring the clinician group in? How how early? Yeah, as is, early is, as possible. For really? Sure. Yeah, definitely, because you make so many decisions early in the design process, and, and if you look at the cost of making a design change throughout that progression, right. you know, it's relatively inexpensive in the beginning versus when you finally have tooling cut and you have prototypes finished and worked, um, or even if it's software product, a lot of code that's already done and validated, and you decide, oh no, this isn't really going to work. So early on, you want to gather the input, and it can be very informal. It doesn't have to take a lot of time or be expensive, but get people involved, get some clinicians, get thought leaders involved, and understand what ultimately they need for that product to be successful. And, and how broad do you go when you define clinician? Because we all know that, for example, a surgical implant will impact not only the surgeon, but the nurses, the, the OR techs, even sure. the storage. Do you, do you recommend spanning all of those different people who are part of interacting with the product at different points? Absolutely, I think it's, it is critical to involve them and think, take that even further and further as, as you think of things that are you know, home use products. Right. We, need to gather, um, we need to gather input from lay users in some cases right. that are going to use this in a very uncontrolled environment right. um, and can be very creative, and, and, but, but that can be dangerous. You know, creativity is good, but it also can be a little tricky and a little dangerous. So. Right. And what tools do you recommend people use to manage this process? Because to your point, you can get a lot of information. How do you filter out what's important from all the red herrings out there? Well, I mean, you, you, the, the underpinnings of it really are a good risk management process. Sure. So you want to understand what's really critical to the patient's safety or to you know, proper use of the device. So there can be a lot of things that people maybe don't like that are personal things. It's good to note that, but you don't want that to be critical. So I think you always have to have that sort of risk approach to look at right. what's really critical to patient safety. Right, absolutely. So the UBM conference uh, this week is just popping. I, the electricity is, is palpable. Um, what are some of the interesting technologies or trends you're noting as you walk the floor? I mean, it's, it's hard to ignore. I mean, 3D printing is 3D huge. 3D printing, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just awesome to see all that going on. But uh, just so many things that are changing, and I think people are 
Um, they, you know, there's, there's automation clicking all around us here, um, which has been really great to watch. But just watching people continuing to improve solutions, getting them right size to, uh, to fit production lines, it, it's just, uh, there's a lot of st great yeah. stuff here, no doubt. A conference like this brings together uh, clinicians, uh, industry folks, consultants like yourselves, and actual uh, device manufacturers. What, what, what benefits do you see to having all these people under one roof? Well, I mean, it's you know we, we live in an outsourced world. We all need each other. It's it's rare that you have the organization that you know does everything under one roof anymore. So it's important for us to know of one another and collaborate. And from my perspective, it's it's great to just be able to meet a lot of different folks um, and put together opportunities. You know, we may or may not be able to serve somebody, but it's still great to meet them, understand what they're doing, some great technology, and if they need help, it's great. Um, but if not. At times, you you know you have folks that you can refer them to that that uh, you know you know oh you're looking for this here go see them right, they do it right. you know so it's 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 like a big family. It is a big family. Um, Bob, if somebody wants to get in touch with you at R and Q, where should they go? You can go to our website. It's www.rqteam.com. Okay, great. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Jill. I'm Jill Schiaparelli. The program is Health Tech Talk Live, broadcast worldwide on iHeartMedia. I'd like to thank uh, the event sponsors, UBM Canon, for having us today. And I'd like to spon uh, thank 1-800-PR.com for their media and PR support. Stay tuned for more interviews with other medical device innovators. Thank you.